One of the prettiest sights of early spring is the primrose. And here we have a very fine example. Now what a lot of people don't know is that every part of this plant is edible from the leaves, which tastes quite nice. They taste like the flower should look, but by far the best part of this plant is the flower, which are like nature's sweet shop. And they taste absolutely beautiful. They almost taste like the flowers look. So here we have one of my favorite little woodland survival snacks, the pig nut. And the interesting thing about the pig nut is that you have to be very careful when you dig down to find the root, which is what we call the pig nut. So make yourself a little digging stick and you have to very carefully follow the stem down. Now it goes very, very thin as it gets to the bottom. That is a very good one. Oh yeah. So first of all, wipe the mud away. Now, some people say these taste like a cross between a chestnut and a radish. It's one of the one of the few sources of carbohydrates you'll find in the wild. It's all beautifully wrapped by nature in, uh, in its very own form of packaging. The hawthorn is one of the most useful of our woodland trees. This time of year, we can pick the flowers and the youngest leaves and make something that was known in the countryside as farmer's bread or bread and cheese. It's really quite tasty. But um, later on in the year, the hawthorn produces haws, H-A-W which is basically the berries. And to me, they taste just like avocado, really, really good. This is uh, Jack by the Hedge, otherwise known as Hedge Garlic. Um, anything garlicky flavored tend to have the name Jack, which is uh, a bit of an old word for the devil. So obviously the devil's breath smells garlicky. And uh, that'll be why. But it has a slight garlicky flavor, it's not bad. So. This plant we have here is called ramson, or wild garlic. Now the parts that are useful to us are the leaves, which have a very strong garlic flavor, or the flowers, which are really pretty and can be used to decorate a, a salad. But I think the most useful part is these small seeds here. So just underneath the flowers, you have these tiny seeds, and they're probably the strongest of all the parts of the plant as far as garlic's concerned. So I like to use these when I'm cooking. One plant that needs absolutely no introduction is this one, the stinging nettle. Now, if you reach down from above and just grab the top few leaves, it doesn't normally sting you. So this is the part that we find the most useful. Forget the rest of it, all these leaves, the big ones down here, they've gone far too old, really fibrous, not worth worrying about. But these top leaves are absolutely ideal for cooking or for making tea. Now, nettles, have been associated with a lot of health benefits, mainly as a blood purification or as a general tonic. It's actually very rich in iron, so it's a really good food for people who are anemic. And as a survival food, it definitely has its place. What I normally do is get about 10 of these, put them in a mug, add some hot water, leave it for about five minutes, and then you've got your, your nettle infusion or nettle tea. Another plant that has a lot of use for a survivor is the dandelion common as muck. Probably find it in your garden, but the dandelion, name comes from the French Don de Lyon, is a very useful food plant. Although it's quite bitter, if you take the small leaves that you find just underneath the large leaves, they tend to be a lot less bitter. Now, most plants that have a milky sap should be considered to be poisonous, but the exception is the dandelion. And if you look at the stem when it's freshly broken, you have this white sap oozing out. Now, as well as being edible, the roots can be dug up and used to make dandelion coffee. So they're roasted in the embers of a fire, ground up, mixed with hot water, very much as you'd use coffee. It doesn't taste quite like coffee, but it's still a pretty decent drink. We have a, a good plant here, very common on old walls, which is where it gets its name, wall pennywort. Uh, it's nice. So it's, uh, as well as growing on walls, it's sort of penny shaped. I guess that's why the name comes from. It has another name navel wort, as in navel belly button, 
There's a slight resemblance to one, and I think it tastes very much like uh, a sugar snap pea. Cut myself. The A to Z of Bushcraft is now out on DVD. Support the series www.azbushcraft.com.